Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm coming to you from beautiful downtown Marquette, Michigan. Now, as you can tell, I'm not in my regular studio and I've got a little bit of an echo in this room and the lighting's not the best. But I wanted to finish up my series on Jiranism, seven ways that you can tell for yourself the moon landings never really happened. So let's cue up the music and get going. All right, let's go on to the number seven, uh, and probably the most hilarious one. I don't know. Um, uh, all right, the retro reflectors are still there as well. And this is the other way that you can tell for yourself. <laughs> you can tell for yourself. What? How can I? Wait, I can tell for myself because some boxes that you say NASA left there are there. You know, once again, Jaronism is really hyping on this tell for yourself as if anybody on the earth can physically go out and shoot a laser has the equipment and the training to be able to interpret the results but you can check them you can look at the data you don't have to have a laser capable of hitting the moon to personally shoot your own laser up there I don't even think Jaron has has the ability to tie his own shoes much less do an experiment like that but there are people out there at universities, non-government agencies, that can and do these experiments to this day. So that little argument from personal incredulity and trying to change the definition of the word that is being used. Can we as civilians check this? You betcha. Are there many among us that can do it? Yes. Are there some that can, like Jaron? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we, as a, as a population, can't do it. So let's go back and see what LT has to say. This is kind of fun. Laser ranging retro reflectors are mirrors that were once used, because they're not used anymore, as targets for Earth-based lasers as part of NASA's lunar laser, laser ranging experiments conducted during the Apollo program. Uh, they were actually conducted before the Apollo program. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Russia, also, Russia also had a retro reflector experiment program as well. Basically, you fire a laser at those objects and measure the time it takes for the laser to hit the reflectors and bounce back. The results of those experiments allowed us to learn that the moon is spiraling away from the Earth at about 3.8 centimeters per year. I'm just dying my, laughing myself. This is ridiculous. We have to think about this. The moon is spiraling away from the Earth at 3.8 centimeters per year. Imagine that you have some sort of laser and you're bouncing it off mirrors on the moon. And you can tell that the moon is moving one and a half inches per year. Get out. Just think about this. The moon is 15 billion, 79 million, 680,000 inches from the earth. And they can detect that it's moving away 1.5 inches per year. They are detecting a change of 0 0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter here. It's the small rectangular shaped white dot near that large crater. The way the laser reflectors work is they form a prism and when you bounce light onto the laser reflector it bounces it back in the same direction from which it came. Oh, it's such a joke. Such a joke. But again, many people will believe it. And it's one of the easy ways you can tell for yourself that we've been to the moon. That is true. What else did they figure out by shooting this laser at the moon? 20% <laughs> of the inner core of the moon is probably liquid. You can tell that from shooting lasers at it. And flesh out some nuances about how gravitational forces work, among other things. Russia also had a retro reflector experiment program as well. Basically, you fire a laser at those objects and measure the time it takes for the laser to hit the reflectors and bounce back. The results of those experiments allowed us to learn that the moon is spiraling away from the Earth at about 3.8 centimeters per year. By the way, the first landing, okay, a uh, soft landing, supposedly, of a craft was 1966. Okay. Um, so when you look at this page for the lunar laser ranging experiment, okay, uh, the ongoing lunar laser ranging experiment measures the distance between the surface of Earth and the moon using laser ranging. Uh, lasers at observatories around the Earth are aimed at retro reflectors planted on the moon during the Apollo program and two Luna cold missions. Mm -hmm. Uh, laser light pulses are transmitted and reflected back to Earth, and the round trip duration is measured. The lunar distance is calculated from this value. Bullshit. But let me read you this part, which is just hilarious. It says, the distance to the moon is calculated approximately. First of all, if something's calculated approximately, don't tell me you can tell that it's moving away 1.5 inches per year when we're talking about something 238,000 miles away. If the distance is calculated approximately, then approximately you're 1.5 inches off. <laughs> Okay, now this is actually kind of funny. Uh, he seems to be taking exception to the term approximately. Let me explain exactly what they mean by approximately. Take our GPS satellite system. Now, we can do the math and figure out how far that signal from the GPS satellite traveled before it hits our GPS receiver. This is a rough estimate of where we are located. You know, you get four satellites that come together, you see where you see where all the circles line up, and that's where you are. The reason that that's an approximate location is that it's not just basic math that you have to use to do this. You have to take in some relativity because of the speed of the satellites and the speed of the Earth, okay? It needs to be adjusted and tweaked just a little bit to make the accuracy better. Same thing with the lunar laser range finding experiments. I'm sure that there are some relativistic considerations that need to be taken care of given the distances and the speeds. And you take the raw data and then you basically clean it up a little bit and fine tune it and take into account these other factors. That's a little higher level mathematics than doing the basic arithmetic that we're, you know, the, that's listed in this article. But let's go ahead and continue on. Using the equation distance equals speed of light times the duration of delay due to reflection divided by two. Then it's that easy, right? Makes a lot of sense. Uh, the, it says to compute the lunar distance pr precisely, many factors must be considered in addition to the round trip time of, a, or of about 2.5 seconds. These factors include the location of the moon in the sky, the relative motion of the Earth and the moon, Earth's rotation, lunar libration, polar motion, weather, velocity of light in various parts of the air, propagation delay through the Earth's atmosphere, the location of the observing station and its motion due to crustal motion and tides and relativistic effects, but we know that it's 1.5 inches per year. Get out. Personally, I think that's pretty cool that we know that much about Earth science. Don't you, Jaron? Isn't that just amazing that we can actually figure those things out and come up with consistent answers? Gotta hand it to science, man. But we know that it's 1.5 inches per year. Get out. Get out. Go home. Don't come by here anymore. Don't watch my videos. Hit delete. Hit block. And go watch Bill Nye tell you about how he's not a scientist. I have to tell you, Jaronism does have a gift for creative writing, doesn't he? I mean, he just has this turn of a phrase that's amazing to me. But let's go ahead and continue. 
Well, Jaron, at least he can read a graph. All right. The man's an engineer. I think he can probably read a graph properly, and I think that he has very well qualified to interpret scientific data. Are you? But what do these guys do? Well, we can figure it out. We just take this rock and we do some laser spectrometry. And when we do, we figure out that it's about, you know, it's about 4.5 billion years old, which is 200 million years older than the rocks on the Earth. Bullshit. Straight up bullshit. Uh, but again, you know, believe what you want. Believe it if you want. Again, <laughs> let's just read one more time just because it's funny that they know now with precise precise distance I think down here it says something about millimeter preciseness or something but we'll, we'll read that in a second well Jaron I'm actually getting a little tired of your personal incredulity so we're going to talk about it right now this is the Apache Point Observatory part of the high energy physics information system these are the people that collect and analyze the laser range finding data from the moon now, here's a brief description of how it's actually done. Here are the locations of the reflectors on the surface of the moon, the Apollos and the Russian reflectors. Here's a picture of, I think that's the Apollo 15 reflector. Yep, that's what it is. Here's some of the data that they have. Here's the variation in the libration frequencies. You see the number of data points that we have on these graphs is just amazing. And we can gather a lot of information about it. For example, this is the uh, physical vibrations of the moon over 18.6 years. You notice how it's forming cycles? That's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? I'm going to do a full episode on this data and what it's told us about the moon for one of my Friday uh, science episodes. In the meantime, I think we're going to finish up this video. In the various parts of the air, the propagation delay through the Earth's atmosphere, we figured that out. We know, we know all the distances the laser travels through from 10 feet of, above me to 100 feet above me, 100,000 feet above me. We know all the differences. The location of the observing station and its motion due to the crustal motion, because, you know, this land is moving too. The tides, we have to take the tide into account, and the relativistic effects. You know, there's relativity going on. Einstein said so. Well, yeah, Einstein said so, and the GPS system and the orbit of the moon bear him out. Now, one of the things that I really like about Jaronism and this argument from personal incredulity that he has, first, he has no idea what any of these things are. And do you think he's bothered looking any of them up to learn a little bit more about them? I don't think so. But the fact is, he likes to rattle this off to try and confuse people without knowing anything about them and seems to imply that all of these numbers were plugged in for this one measurement. That's not really the case. Where did these numbers come from? They came from tens of thousands of experiments looking at the speed of light through the atmosphere at different angles, looking at all of these other factors. And they're applied in many different uh, applications, such as the GPS system uses Einstein's relativity to accurately find your location on Earth to within a few feet. Uh, you know, commercial systems can actually locate it to within a matter of inches. These numbers are used for that as well. And they're correct because we can determine that they're correct by looking at benchmarks and such. We can verify it by other means that they are correct. And that's something that Jaronism just doesn't get.